morning everyone our uh, topic for today is effects of radiation on coral tissues radiation can cause uh, various effects in the biological macromolecules it can uh, these effects can uh, causes for hours decades or even generations today we will be discussing about effects of this radiation on oral tissues so let's start Radiation affects the oral mucous membrane, salivary glands, face buds, teeth, and even bone. Coming to oral mucositis, the oral mucosa gets inflamed following irradiation to a particular amount of uh, radiation. That is, after one to two weeks of radiotherapy, the oral mucosa gets uh, starts starts getting inflamed, ulcerations start develop, erythematous areas are seen within the oral mucosa. Okay. causing oral mucositis. This will compromise the nutritional intake of the patient and again it compromises the oral hygiene status of the patients. It also increases the risk for, risk for uh, local and systemic inflammation, infections. So once the radiotherapy proceeds and once it uh, completes and within two months, the mucosa starts healing by itself. So later on, it becomes atrophic, thin, and relative, uh, relatively vascular. And fibrosis of the underlying connective tissue happens. Management, again, management is mainly pain control as a uh, management. Then nutritional support is provided since the oral hygiene uh, status and nutritional intake is compromised. So nutritional support is given, anti-inflammatory agents can be given, antioxidants can be given. And this mucositis can cause superadded candidal inflammation infection, which is uh, again a complication related to oral mucositis. So treatment for this is also provided. Antifungal agents are also given along with anti-inflammatory agents. This is uh, oral mucositis. Uh, you can see inflamed areas are uh, seen on the labial mucosa and uh, which is covered by whitish pseudomembrane. Next is taste buds. When we give a therapeutic uh, dosage of uh, radiation for, uh, while, doing, uh, while doing radiotherapy, there is degeneration of a normal architecture of uh, taste buds, which can cause uh, impaired taste sensation following the radiotherapy. Usually by second to third week of radiotherapy, there is a decrease in taste sensation noted. There is alteration in saliva may also be a part of this uh, because salivary gland is also affected. So the composition of saliva is also affected, which can, which may also be one of the reasons for uh, altered taste sensation. So this damage to taste buds is reversible. So following uh, radiotherapy, it can revert back to a normal position after uh, three to four months. So when the Posterior tongue is irradiated, there is uh, alteration in bitter and acid flavor. And when the anterior part of the tongue is irradiated, there is loss of uh, sweet and salt flavors. So management, again, dietary consultation has to be provided and improvement in the quality of uh, nutritional intake of the patient has to be done. Along with that, zinc sulfate capsules can be provided. Next is effect on salivary gland. Effect of, uh, on salivary gland. Uh, can cause various other uh, effects as well because uh, saliva, composition of saliva is uh, varied, viscosity of saliva is changed, pH of the saliva is changed, buffering capacity of saliva is changed. So all these uh, things can uh, bring about various uh, problems such as uh, one is I mean, loss of taste sensation, another thing is uh, dental caries, uh, there will be prominence of dental caries seen because of the effect on uh, salivary glands since the composition of saliva and uh, properties of saliva is changed. So this is also reversible, when after 6 to 12 months of the uh, radiotherapy, there can be compensatory hypertrophy of the salivary gland which uh, will cause a decrease in this hyposalivation and xerostoma. So irreversible effect of uh, salivary gland occurs after the irradiation with 6,000, more than, if we irradiate the salivary gland more than 6,000 centigrade for five weeks continuously, it can cause irreversible damage to salivary gland. Otherwise, what we are giving normal radiotherapy dose for we give, according to that, we can uh, the salivary gland will come back to its normal positions 
Once uh, the radiotherapy is complete, up to six to 12 months, it can take to come back to its normal position. So management, uh, uh, how we manage normally, how we manage uh, zero stomia or hypersalivation, similarly we have to manage. That is, a uh, patient is asked to sip, uh, sip water frequently, sugarless drain dumps can be given, bilocarbon hydrochloride can be used. Next is teeth. So uh, there can be direct or indirect effect on teeth. Once one, I had already told salivary, when salivary gland is affected, when salivation is affected, uh, obviously teeth will get affected. There will be very uh, higher incidence of caries as seen. Another thing is before calcification, if it is uh, irradiated, if teeth is getting irradiated before the calcification process, it can cause destruction of tooth. If it is after uh, calcification, it can cause uh, inhibition of cellular differentiation. So it can lead to malformation or arrested growth of uh, teeth. And if uh, during the development of teeth, if it is uh, teeth is getting irradiated, it can cause retarded growth. And uh, in adults, usually teeth is uh, development, since it is already over, teeth is uh, calcification is not much affected. And the eruptive process is also not getting affected. But it can cause fibroatrophy of pulp. Next is radiation caries. So rampant uh, decays are uh, usually seen in patients getting irradiated by uh, uh, during radiotherapy. So it can be used uh, due to reduce salivary flow, decrease in salivary pH, reduce buffering capacity, and increase viscosity of saliva. So three types of caries are mainly seen. One is some uh, uh, most common is seen is white cell superficial lesions, which is mostly seen in buccal, occlusal, incisal, and palatal surface. Next is uh, caries which involve mainly cementum and dentine in the cervical region. This is a uh, typical appearance of uh, caries in case of uh, radiotherapy. Next is dark pigmentation, which is seen throughout the crown. So the entire crown can get uh, pigmented. So this is another type of caries, which is seen patients uh, getting irradiated. So the best method is uh, using viscous uh, topical 1% neutral sodium fluoride gel. And along with that, salivary supplements also has to be in one. So, uh, and a uh, combination of restrictive dental procedures, excellent oral hygiene has to be followed. Diet restrictions has to be followed strictly. And topical application of sodium fluoride can be done. So co uh, combining all these things can help to reduce the incidence of caries. Next is bone. So radiation can, of course, cause damage to the vasculature, uh, ca causing destruction of osteoblasts and osteoclasts. The, there can be atrophy of the endosteum. All these things uh, can also lead to osteoradial process. So uh, an uh, exposure of irradiated bone, which fails to heal without intervention. So mandible uh, is mostly affected by osteoradionecrosis. It is characterized by hypocellularity, hypovascularity, and hypoxia. Mainly, uh, as I had already told, uh, exposed to bone may be seen within the oral cavity. There can be pain, swelling, tresmus, halitosis. Exposed bone is seen, pathological fracture can happen, and uh, oro and orocutaneous fistulas can also be seen. Radiographically, uh, areas of decalcifications can be seen in later stages, involucrum and sequestrum can be seen. So, best method is prevention in case of uh, osteoadenocrosis. Always uh, we have to think about all the whatever periodontally compromised or whatever infections are there, everything has to be dealt with before giving radiotherapy. So before a patient is posted to for radiotherapy, all these kind of infectious sources has to be treated. All periodontally uh, compromised tooth has to be treated. All whatever infections are there, whatever uh, extractions are indicated, whatever treatment can be done before the radiotherapy, it has to be done so that we can prevent future inf infection and we can prevent osteoarthritis. That's all. Thank you.